Hey everyone, today we're going to be doing a little bit more work in the Discovery, so I'll just show you in a sec what we're actually, uh, well, what we've already done, just because some of it I couldn't film, we're kind of running out of time for what we're going to get done in the next few weeks, and uh, what we're planning on doing today, so I'll show you what we're going to do. You probably remember from the last video, spare wheel access is actually under this tab here. Uh, so what we're doing is we want to put a false floor in that's going to cover all of this and there's two ways that I've seen this done for access to this. The first is actually bringing it up to the top with a, call it a bottle screw, which is basically just a, something that goes onto the top, onto the actual latch here, and then you bring it up through your false floor. But the problem with doing that is you're basically losing part of your false floor um, space just to bring that bottle screw up. So what we're gonna try and do instead is, we've got one of these struts, well, we actually got two of them, sorry, that came from Bunnings, and we've taken the covers off the sides of the uh, seat belts in the back here, which is what this cover came from. Now, just so everyone can see, that's the actual cover area of the seat belt. So you've got a latch that's on the front, couple along the back as well and you actually need a Torx T40 to take the bolt out of here this normally sits in under that it's in the back there as well actually probably be the other way around like that yeah like that to take that out as well so that's now exposed the bolt on the seat belt here and the bolt on the seat belt on this side as well now, we're not using the seven seats, very rarely use them, but what I'm trying to do here is not have to bolt into, like drill into anything in the car and just use existing points. And the good thing with these is the strut will actually sit pretty much flush along to that bolt on both sides. And because of where the seat belts actually sit, those bolts are even on both sides of the car. So instead of having to piggyback off something like here, or here, we've got an even space on both sides. And then also you've got something that these are gonna kind of sit on as well to give them a little bit of extra support when everything's closed. Now to take off the seatbelt bolt, you're gonna need a 15 mil socket. Uh, now the thing to remember is it needs to be a deeper socket. You can't get away with a short one just because of how protruded the bolt is. So I've just got this uh, 15 mil one here and that's doing the job for now. Take it off, you just pull it forward. The washers that are in it are basically pressed in, so you don't have to worry too much about that. I think it actually might be a bearing even by the looks of it. And then you can just let it retract up to here and it'll just sit there like that. Now what we're probably gonna do eventually is find a way to sort of tuck it in here so it's not gonna shake and you know, could hit the window if you're getting wild, I guess, but that'll do it for now, it's out of the way. Right, both the bolts are out now. So the next thing I'm looking at, this is a plate that I made up just playing around in the last few days, trying to figure a few things out. With these struts, you can either have basically the, this threaded uh, rod on the end, or you can actually change out the rod and then use one of these little brackets that the, the ball of the strut will actually fit into. So with the amount of space that we've got available, that's probably what we're going to do with this one because if we actually look here, do it on this side. Once the plate's actually on, that's not exactly how this is going to sit. We'll change it so it sits a bit differently. You're not going to have any room behind the plate to actually bolt through because of the way that the bracket sits so you can see there the top of the bracket's actually enclosed so i think this is going to be the best way is we'll basically make up a couple of plates like this um, and then use those brackets so that they can sort of sit flush along here and then at the back this will actually then go on to won't be sitting like that obviously but the false foil this will attach to the bottom of it and then the idea will be that'll be the the point that is actually basically mounted to so when you push your floor down it's actually going to clip in and then we'll have to figure out a way to actually hold it down so it can't pop back up this is nothing to do with the car but i bought a vice yesterday so just got to mount that up on the bench 
This may seem like a pretty simple thing to think about, but when you're actually mounting a vise, there's a few things. One, make sure where you're gonna put it, you've actually got room to yeah, actually open it and close it. So we've got that now. We go the whole way around without actually hitting anything. And then on the bottom side of it as well, make sure that there's nothing that's actually gonna be underneath the bench that you're gonna hit in terms of when you draw through to mount it. And the third thing is, it's always good to actually have it overhanging something, just in case. If I want to angle something down against here, I can. Uh, whereas if I put it in the middle of the bench, I'd either have to bring the vise out further. Um, just gives you a little bit more room to move if you need to. I'm going to cut the metal. I'm going to try and use the Dremel Easy Lock disc. I haven't used these before, but the whole idea is pull this down. It exposes the top there. That then goes through your disc and just locks on, so we'll give that a try instead of a hacksaw and see if it works okay. Remember as well, if you're cutting metal, protect your eyes somehow, you want to still be able to see. <laughs> to do is these are normally a l-shaped bracket so I've just knocked them out so they're basically sitting straight so that they're going to fit in with what we want to do now I've measured up for these plates I've got to come down probably 25 mil from the top to get at the center of the bolt um, and then we'll have a look at whether the bolts can actually come through this plate here as well to just mount it up flush it was a bit more of a mission than I expected but this is what we've done so I've got the plate steel I've got two holes at the bottom to go through the pre-drilled holes that were on the bracket. Flatten the bracket out. Now on the back, one big hole is basically where we're gonna go through the um, seat belt. The top one's just kind of like a locator pin so that when I do the other one that they hopefully will sit flush along the top. Just cause these two bits of steel when I've cut them obviously aren't 100% right. Um, it should help to keep them kind of in the center cause they're gonna to align to one side. Just done a test fit, just come across a bit of a minor issue, which is, as you can probably see there, that's going to connect with that, but we've got a fair bit of room on the thread here, so what I might do is get some washers to put it behind this bracket. Um, the other thing we could have done is best get another plate of steel and just put it behind it so it's got something else to sit on, but the steel is quite difficult to drill through when you don't have the appropriate bits like I seem to not have. So. I think washers are probably gonna be the go. And then if we need to, you just add a couple of more washers to, to space it out. Just doing a test fit with a block of wood. So you can see that kind of runs parallel to that, this panel here, which is what I want. So I don't want it sitting above it, I want it sitting inside. Finishes up just short of the um, end of the car. Same on this side. This one probably doesn't need as much of a spacer because this, this panel doesn't stick out as much, which would be good. So the next thing we're gonna do is get a piece of MDF and then just test fit these bottom brackets onto the MDF at the angle that we want. So you know, it might be here, for example, and then we'll uh, put some weight on it, make sure it comes down and comes back up the way that we want. Right, eh? A couple of stupid things I did. One was cut this not quite long enough to actually just hinge directly onto the board. Um, next thing I had to do is actually those um, tie downs at the front there are basically just so that there's something for this to hinge off. Because before, if you don't have it sort of set like this, as soon as you try and test the, um, the struts, the struts actually move. So hey, I'm just gonna try and do this. So you can see now. And then I'll let it back up. So it's definitely working, that's sort of the way that we anticipate. Obviously, when we've got everything on the, the top of it there, it's going to come up and down. Problem with, this is a problem with 6 mil, which I think we're just going to have to go 12. So it's just too flexible. So we're going to try and do 6 mil just to sort of give you extra space up the, to the top of the roof. But as you can see, it's just not, yeah, just not strong enough, unfortunately. So let me see if we can do this. Yeah, there we go. So you see now it's sitting the way it should, basically. And then the idea is we'll put some latches down on this side. Then if we do need access to this spare wheel winch, undo the latches, and then you've got access down there. So now that I've sort of test fit everything, 
the next step will be we'll actually go get the um, 12 mil stuff. Just don't think six is going to cut it, cut it properly rather than the way that I've done it, and um, then put our fridge and our drawers and everything on it. Now another thing I did notice, which is um, probably didn't help when we were just testing stuff out then because it would have loaded more on one side. If you actually look at the plate here, it hasn't really moved. It's still flush with where we put it. This one's twisted, which meant that basically one side was lifting more than the other. So it could very well be that the 250Ns are actually, you know, quite enough um, once we mount everything up properly. So, you know, we've tested that out and kind of, you know, know everything's going to sit where it needs to sit. We can start to, you know, do the whole thing properly. All right, we've got our washers in, spacers on each side. Strut we can change if we need to, which is really good. Got the six mil bit of pie. Now what we're doing is these marks here. I'm actually going to bring the tie down points up through there, and then use a um, one of those latches that's sitting at the back here to basically latch onto a D shackle onto here. So that that'll help everything sit sort of flush with the floor, and uh, should work pretty well. Now because this is a bit of a tricky fit, what we're going to do is. This is roughly the size of the tie down points and this is where it should be inset to before it starts. So what I'm gonna do is just drill a hole in the center of each of the marks that I've done here and then just test fit it back in and just make sure that that's where they're actually coming up to. Um, problem with this is provided we've measured right on both sides, then it should actually sit flush on both sides and sit sort of you know in line with the seats like we had before. But if we get this wrong, it won't. So. The easiest way to test it is just do one small hole. That way, if something is a bit of miss, we're not, you know, wasting the whole bit of ply. Put it all in. Had a uh, bit of a mix up with these bits back here. The way that we'd hinged them before was basically opposite to where they're sitting. So this is going to work for now, having the D shackles in, which is just bolted through. Um, probably a better way of doing it would be maybe to get some a metal bracket on both sides just to strengthen it a little bit, but it's holding up pretty good. We just put all the drawers and everything in just to test the weight and it looks all right. So then that's what all the markings are for. Now if we do this, struts are working with no weight. Now, when we put all the weight on it before, found that it's actually, the struts won't hold all of the weight, but the good thing is all we're gonna need to do is put a handle here and you just lift it up and it'll actually lift half the weight for you and you can either chock it up um, could possibly as well look at doing basically just replacing the struts which is not that difficult to do with the way that we've done it here basically all you'd be doing is um, taking the weight off or even just unbolting the hinge and then you can knock the ball joint off on this side or on the other side and then just replace it as well so like I said you know probably we don't really need to do it there's some other things that are a problem when you replace them so these struts the good thing with them is the size the problem when you go up in um, struts with in terms of supporting weights is they generally get longer. So as you can see, there's not all that much space between everything. Um, so that's why we've decided to go with these ones and probably just a handle and something to, to prop it up. We were tested to see that basically the spare wheel access, which is what we're worried about. Plenty of room, as you can see. Yeah, that's my hand as a bit of an idea. I don't have a tape measure or anything at the moment. It's plenty of room to actually get the... Um, the winder in and get the tire out if we need to.